Hello and welcome to another edition of Not So Great Deck Monday, where we take not so great decks and put them to the test. Today we're going to be looking at one of my new pet projects of the last month or so, Empoleon. Empoleon is one of the new cards from the Ultra Prism set, which is about a couple of months old now. But as we're getting into the new Forbidden Light set coming up in a few weeks, I thought it would be good to kind of look back at some cards that may have been missed. So let's dive into this list. This list is a rehash of the expanded list that I played about a month ago at a League Cup and made top four with. Um, I decided I had so much fun playing in expanded that I'd go ahead and give it a try in standard format. Uh, next week I probably will be covering the expanded list, um, but it does require playing Tropical Beach, which I know not everybody has. But in, for now, let's get into the standard list. So for those who don't know, Empoleon has the total command attack, which does 20 damage times the number of bench Pokemon both you and your opponent have in play. Uh, so with a full bench, you can hit 200 damage easily. Uh, if you had damage modifiers like Choice Band, you can hit up to 230, which can knock out most of the EXs and GXs in the format, most of them only having 210 HP. Pollen also has Whirlpool, which can discard an energy off your opponent's Pokemon. So for the Pokemon lineup, we have one Oricorio, which is mostly used for Supernatural Dance, which will allow me to place one damage counter on my opponent's side of the field for every Pokemon in their discard pile. We do play two Tapu Lele, of course, for that Wonder Tag ability. We do play four of the 70 HP Piplup from Ultra Prism. That's super cute. We do play three Printplup, the next stage up from Piplup. Printplup also has Bubble Beam, which can paralyze your opponent's active Pokemon. And we already talked about Empoleon. The real key to this deck is this 2-2 Octillery line. Um, Abyssal Hand is a fantastic ability, especially in this deck. We don't have trade to rely on. Um, so Abyssal Hand lets you refill your hand, play some cards out, and refill your hand again, allowing you to draw a ton of cards. The deck does play three Aqua Patch, which will attach a water energy from our discard pile to one of our bench water Pokemon. Um, so it's a form of energy acceleration for in pulldown, which it does not have built in. We do play two copies of Evil Soda to search our deck for evolved Pokemon and get them into play pretty quickly. We also play one copy of Field Blower Nest Ball, those are just cards you can play out of your hand at any time almost, which lets you use Abyssal Hand more often. We do play two copies of Rare Candy, which lets us evolve from Piplup straight into Empoleon. This doesn't happen that often in this deck, but it is a great card to play. We also play a 1-1 split of Rescue Stretcher and Super Rod. This is to get back Pokemon and Water Energy back into the deck, as it takes many pieces to get Empoleon into play. We do play four Ultra Ball probably the best consistency card in the current format besides Sycamore. We do play two Brooklet Hill, which can be used to get basic water Pokemon into play. For our supporters, we're not playing anything too crazy. Uh, one copy of Bridget, two copy of Cynthia, three Guzma, which is probably the most important card in the deck, uh, two copy of N, and three copies of Professor Sycamore. We do play three Choice Band to augment our damage, two Floatstone because all of our evolved Pokemon have a two retreat cost, and nine water energy. That being said, I think this list is pretty solid, but we'll go ahead and take a look at it in action. So this is game one with Empoleon. We're playing against Mr. Actsis. Uh, we see our hand is pretty good. Uh, we do have a Bramorade and a Bridget to start out with. Um, here, I'm probably gonna wanna start with a Piplup. Uh, we do not want Bramorade active unless we have Floatstone in hand. Uh, and even then I probably would make the same play um, just to conserve my float zone. So we are playing against a buzz wall deck. Um, here, I think I'm gonna grab a double Remorade start and a Piplup. I have the option to get a third Piplup into play, um, but I know buzz wall typically plays Parallel City. So I think the better play might be to take the Oricorio. In case I do get Parallel, I can throw the Oricorio instead of a Piplup. Yeah, so. I'll go ahead and drop the other two Pokemon from my hand and pass on to my opponent's turn. A little bit unfortunate that we didn't get an energy here in our opening hand, but not too bad. So we see a Floatstone and a Fighting Energy on my opponent's Buzzwall. Uh, that's pretty good because now my Piplup will not be getting knocked out. Um, as he would have needed a strong energy and maybe... Nope, there's no, there's no way the Piplup was getting knocked out this turn. So we do see the Pearl City actually, so great. Um, I can go ahead and discard the Oracorio and the Piplup. I think the double Octillery is probably going to be key here. Um, and then we'll see a Jet Punch doing 30 damage to my Piplup and probably another 30 damage onto that bench Piplup. 
So if we have an Ultra Ball, we can discard an Ultra Ball and an Empoleon. Uh, we do play the Rusty Stretcher and Super Rod to get those back. And we're going to go ahead and grab a double Octillery play here. So we'll he and evolve into uh, Octillery. Another evolve into Octillery and Abyssal Hand, drawing four cards. And we're looking to bump that Parallel City, so hopefully we get a Brooklet Hill. Not quite. We do have a Floatstone. We go ahead and attach that onto the Octillery. Place an energy on the active and a second Abyssal Hand. We do have another Ultra Ball. So here I can go ahead and discard the Empoleon and the Water Energy. And I'm going to grab a Print Plup to start setting up my active Pokemon. Um, that's two Empoleon in the discard pile, but we do, again, like I said before, we play the Rest Stretcher and the Super Rod. We do have a Brooklet Hill to bump that Parallel City. That'll let us grab that Piplup that we left in the deck earlier. And we'll have a second Print Plup come down. I do have an Evo Set on hand, but I do believe that my third Print Plup is prized. And that's okay. So we'll see a Bubble Beam here for 20 damage. Flipping heads, go Muna. Uh, paralyzing that Buzz Wall. So unless my opponent has some sort of uh, Guzma play, more than likely I won't be taking any damage this turn. We do see a Fighting Energy onto the bench as well, and a Cynthia going ahead and give my opponent a fresh hand of six cards. Um, so yeah, I did have the Evo Soda in hand. I could have played it um, to grab the Print Plup if it wasn't prized. And we do see the Brooklet Hill for, I believe it was the Buzz Wall, and a Max Elixir going to fail that um, search for an energy, which is pretty good for us. You see a Fib Blower going to get rid of my Float Stone and maybe the Brooklet Hill. Uh, but my opponent can also benefit from that as well. And we see a Choice Band going onto the Buzz Wall. Not going to matter too much. Probably won't be benching Lele anytime soon. And a Po Town comes in, is coming into play. Uh, po Town, not a card that we see too often in Buzz Wall. Um, but because we do play Evo Soda, we can actually get around that damage. And we do see a second Evo Soda, even better. So we can get double Empoleon this turn. Uh, I do have a Super Rod. I can put back the other Empoleon. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. I think I'm going to grab the Oricorio back. Um, so now, because of the Nest Ball, I can get the Oricorio in play. Because of the Evo Sodas, I can um, evolve into Empoleon without taking the damage from the Po Town. So this hand was very, very, very good. We'll see an Abyssal Hand for three cards. Looking for some Water Energy. And I think we're in a Sycamore. Hoping to hit an Aqua Patch if possible, uh, but it does not look like we are gonna get there. I could have to Float Stone, but I think I'm gonna hold that in my hand until I really need it. I believe I'm also 10 damage short from the Knockout here. Unfortunate, I didn't hit either the Aqua Patch or the Choice Band. Um, but that is A-OK. -okay. I do have the Oracorio on the bench. Uh, so if my opponent ever gets any Pokemon in the discard pile, I can always Supernatural Dance that bench buzz wall. And a N will hit us. And we have a fresh hand of six. We do see an Aqua Patch and Choice Pan, both cards that we missed in the last turn. So a bit unfortunate there that I didn't get the one hit knockout, but I think that is okay. We do see a Mew coming down with the Fighting Energy. Um, going to allow for a Jet Punch. We do see a Counter Energy. I'm not sure why my opponent attached that right now. Um, uh, they are not ahead in prizes, or I am not ahead in prizes. So the Counter Energy is just going to be uh, one energy instead of two. So we won't see a Knockout, just a Jet Punch. Going to hit my Empoleons more than likely going to bring us up to 60 damage on each of those. Um, maybe my opponent thought I had taken a prize and he could have gone for like an Absorption GX or a Knuckle Impact with the counter energy. Also kind of surprised I didn't save that for something like a Sudowoodo and for a Watch and Learn to copy my total command. Um, so yeah, we do have the Aqua Patch going to get a Water Energy into play onto that benched Empoleon and an attachment to Piplup. 
separating my en energy uh, just in case something gets knocked out. We do have a field blower to get rid of the po town, and I have a choice band in hand. I'm gonna hold on to that and abyssal hand for one. We do see a just second choice band. Um, I'm gonna hold both of those and just go for the total command. One shotting that Mew a few times over. We do see a Brooklet Hill come out of my prizes. Um, I don't know if my opponent plays another Parallel City, um, but that would be good, a good card to keep in my hand as well. So we see a strong energy onto the active Buzzwall, a Cynthia for a fresh hand of six, um, but promoting the Buzzwall with the energy already attached to it probably signals that my opponent is not gonna be getting the knockout here, um, as it would have to been Max Elixir on the bench. So we see an Ultra Ball. Probably going to grab a artillery for my opponent so they can start drawing some extra cards as well. So we'll see. Interesting that they put a Fury Belt on that Brim Raid. Um, if at any point in the game I wanted a Lysander or Guzma it up, sorry, Guzma it up, I can probably stall with it and hit the bench with the Oracorio if I need to. But so far so good. Um, I don't think that's much of an issue at the point at this point. So we see a Wonder Tag, going to grab my opponent, a Supporter for the turn. Uh, checking the discard pile. Maybe... Hmm. Gonna grab a Guzma. Uh, I do believe they can bring up an Octillery if they really want to. Uh, not this turn, but holding on to the Floatstone previously is going to be beneficial here. So we'll see another Jet Punch, hitting the active 450 and the bench and pulling on for 30 more damage. Um, so you can see pulling on is pretty tanky. I can touch a Water Energy onto my Oricario and a Choice Band onto the active. Brooklyn Hill going down, trying to thin down my hand, um, preparing for the late game and shenanigans. And Abyssal Hand, drawing an extra card. And it's the Tapu Lele. Probably going to hold that until the end of the game. And we'll see a total command, gonna one shot this buzzwall for 210 damage, taking two more prizes, and back onto my opponent's turn. So what can my opponent do? They can't really promote that damaged buzzwall. Um, that fresh buzzwall does not have any energy attached to it. Um, if they try to attach a strong energy, they'll be able to take a knockout on the Sempoleon. Um, but that gives me a chance to one-shot that Buzzwall in return. I will need a bench Pokemon and a choice band, I believe, unless my opponent benches another Pokemon. So we do see that strong energy onto the Buzzwall. That'll allow him to knock out my uh, Empoleon. Nope, we're gonna see a Guzma into the other Buzzwall. Um, not really sure I agree with this play. I guess they are hoping that my Octillery will get stuck there. Um, but I do have another Floatstone. I do have plenty of Guzma in the deck. I can thin down my hand quite a bit. Um, so we'll see 30 damage onto the Octillery and 30 damage onto the other Empoleon. Um, here, I'm gonna Ultra Ball, discard Empoleon, and maybe Tapu Lele. I'll double Empoleon. So we do have another Goose on the deck. We do have a Float Stone. We can put down this Choice Band. We can attach the Aqua Patch. And let's go ahead and put another Energy onto my Bench and attach to my Piplup. Uh, and we'll see an Abyssal Hand for three cards. We do have a Rare Candy, an N, and a Cynthia. Uh, not really cards I wanted to see at this moment. If I can Cynthia, maybe I'll find a Floatstone. I have 11 cards left in the deck. Um, that's a pretty good chance of getting that Floatstone, and there it is. So we can retreat into my Oracorio, and we're actually going to take a knockout with Supernatural Dance. There is exactly <laughs> two Pokemon in my opponent's discard pile, uh, but all I needed was one. So I'll go down to one prize. And we do see a Primplup out of the prizes, which will allow me to get my Piplup evolved next turn. Um, double strong energy on the active Buzzwall. 
Still not enough to knock out the Oracorio. That fighting resistance really coming in handy here. Um, because the, my opponent played Cynthia, they're also not going to be able to knock out any of my Apollyons this turn. Um, so now that I have Guzman in hand, this game is over. I will be able to knock out basically anything on the bench. Uh, artillery. Um, I can knock out Tapu Lele with a choice band. If my opponent drops anything like that Mew, um, that'll also be um, the one prize that I need. So this game is basically over. Just waiting for my opponent to attack and back onto my turn. So we do see a field blower. I guess that will remove my choice bands. Um, not too big of a deal as this game is already sealed. Um, so yeah, that's basically how the deck can set up um, pretty quick. And as you can see, the buzzle matchup wasn't too big of a threat. My opponent did whiff on some max elixirs, which is unfortunate, um, but mostly in in command <laughs> for most of the game. So we'll see a Guzma into the Mew and a total command for the knockout. Uh, yeah, but yes, I need to click on yes. And a total command for the knockout. So we'll go into game number two momentarily. So welcome to game three versus Mr. Ankai and Ankai 3. I'm not going to even try. We do start with a Tapu Lele in the active position, not the greatest. We see uh, not much in our hand either. We do have Brooklyn Hill. I guess that's something. My opponent sleeves signaling they're playing a fire deck. I am okay with this. Uh, I do top deck pick up, so that's great. Now I can use my Brooklyn Hill to grab a Remoraid. And um, I think I'm going to attach a water energy onto Lele. Um, I think my opponent is probably playing Ho Oh GX. Um, when he sees like the invasion, uh, yeah, so there's a Ho Oh. Good. Uh, when you see that invasion, Dusk Main or Dawn Wings Necrozma, um, and the Salazzle, that pretty much signals a Ho Oh GX deck. So I'm attaching to Lele um, in case they do Kiawe, which they're not going to this first turn since they played the Cynthia. But if my opponent was um, Kiawe, I could Guzma up that Ho Oh and evolve into Artillery, draw an energy, you know, and do a bunch of damage to the Ho Oh. So here we'll Brooklyn Hill to get another Pebble Open to play. Evil Soda, going to grab a Print Plot from the deck. I do have all three. We'll see. Okay, yes, I know how it evolves, what evolving does. And a Evolve into Octillery. I'm going to go ahead and bring up that Ho-Oh, -Oh, actually. Just to play down a few cards in my hand. Abyssal Hand for four cards. And we will get uh, another energy. So this will let me energy drive this turn for 60 damage. Yes, I know how to retreat. Uh, 60 damage, which can set up the knockout next turn if my opponent decides to Kiawe. Um, even if they invasion into the active, yeah. So they're going to invasion into the active. But we still might see the Kiawe, but I do have Guzma in hand which is great. So with that Kiawe, they attach four energies to ho -Oh. That's a total of six. I'm 10 short at the moment, um, but if I can grab a choice band, that would be super. So we'll see a Kiawe going to attach four, uh, three energy onto that ho -Oh. If they attach four, that would have been great, but that's not the case here. I do have an Empoleon, so I can get that into play. I can Brooklyn Hill, grab another Piplup or Remoraid. Let's get that Evolve first. Brooklyn Hill. Yeah, let's grab the Remoraid. Um, the other artillery is prized, but that's okay. Here I can Guzma, bring up that Ho-Oh. And if I can Abyssal Hand into a Choice Band, that Ho-Oh is going to be knocked out. But that is not the case. Um, that's rather unfortunate. Hmm. Well, I guess I will be 10 off. 
uh, that ho is going to take two prizes this next turn, but what can you do? Well, we see a Salazzle, yeah. So Salazzle GX with that, uh, I think it's called Queen's Blaze attack, can do a ton of damage if my opponent starts taking a bunch of prize cards. Um, however, my opponent will need to take at least four prizes before it can one-shot an Empoleon. And obviously Salazzle is weak to water, which is fantastic. We do see an Aranguru hit the field, uh, a Max Elixir, Probably going to try to grab an energy and put it onto the Tapu Lele. Yep. And an instruct for two cards. Um, but now that I feel Blower in hand, I can actually get rid of the Floatstone on the um, Dawnwing Necrozma. So that's good. I can get rid of Brooklyn Hill if I really want to and play down the second Brooklyn Hill. I do have the Oricorio in the deck, which is also. Pretty great. So here, I think I'm going to grab another Empoleon and evolve, play the field blower, get rid of that float stone. Going to leave the Brooklyn Hill in play. I don't have another water Pokemon in the deck yet, um, but that's okay. Here we'll Abyssal Hand, just get some cards out of the deck. We can get rid of Bridget, that's really great. We do have a choice band. So now I need to draw an Aqua Patch this turn off of the Sycamore. And that is not the case. Hmm. Well, at least I removed the Float Stone, right? <laughs> so I'm going to retreat. Hmm. I'm gonna give up my Remoraid. So my opponent can't use Phoenix Fern without um, hitting the bench with the Invasion or Guzma, so that's okay. Um, so they might just be stuck either Kiaoing again, or they can Sacred Fire or something on the bench. Um, yeah, so we'll just see the Sacred Fire, cool. Doing 50 damage to my Empoleon, not too big of a deal. We do have a Nest Ball on hand, not the greatest. Here I'm just gonna go ahead and Sycamore the hand away. And looking for the Aqua Patch. There is the Aqua Patch, finally. So now I have an uh, option. I can attack with Empoleon, which is cool. Or I can attack with Piplup, which is even cooler. Um, that actually, actually um, helps a lot because I am not giving up an Empoleon, obviously. Um, my opponent has to promote the Salazzle GX, which is also a plus, because Tapu Lele cannot knock out this print plop, and neither can that Ho'o -Oh on the bench. So let's see what my opponent decides to do. Do they promote the Salazzle, or do they promote the Tapu Lele? If they promote Tapu Lele, um, I can knock out the Lele next turn with the Empoleon in hand. Um, typically Ho'o -Oh doesn't play many copies of N, so this should be a really good turn for me. So we see another energy onto top of the signaling that energy drive. Not going to do a ton of damage to my, poly, my print plop, um, which is perfect. So we see an energy drive for 60 damage. Now I can just evolve into Empoleon, attach the water energy, get another Octillery into play. Do I want to play Super Rod just yet? I don't think so. I do have a Tapu Lele in the discard pile. I think I'm gonna hold on to that until I really need to play it, which might not have to, actually. Um, I only need two more prizes after this Lele goes down. And we have another Water Energy. So even if this Empoleon gets knocked out, I can Super Rod the Tapu Lele back into the deck and Ultra Ball for it to grab Guzma and end the game. Um, but if my opponent doesn't end me, I also have the Empoleon for the knockout with the water energy also in hand. So let's just see a Heat Blaze, and that's the end of this game as well. Kind of anticlimactic. Um, I did record some other games, but it was another Ho-Oh deck, and that one went even worse for my opponents. 
Pelosco see a retreat into my Empoleon and a total command for a bunch of damage. Um, yeah. So next week, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but in expanded format uh, with the list that I used to make top four at the San Antonio League Cup. Well, uh, thanks for watching. See you guys next week.